adventurers and welcome to skill tree where we learn how to do just about everything now a few weeks back you may remember that i made this crafters kit up here and ever since then i got a whole bunch of requests to make a healer's kit to kind of go along with the same theme basically just something cool for like either a larp or a reenactment or just for fun honestly that you can wear on you have all the stuff you need to heal or do whatever you gotta do like that basically play the support character be the mercy now, upon deciding to do that, Maddie came up with a badass design here. So that's today's episode. Let's see what we can do by making that a reality and leveling up this skill. Now, for starters, I wanted to make this thing rugged, but maybe a little bit more accessible. In the past, I've made everything like this out of either leather or wood. So we're going to try something new today and make this out of some canvas duck cloth that I bought from Joanne Fabrics. I bought about three yards of this. It's a nice color and super sturdy feeling. For the body of my bag, I just measured out 13 inches worth of fabric with the thought that my bag would be about a foot wide and give me half inch seam allowances on either side. And because the fabric is still folded when I cut through it, the entire piece ends up being about five feet long. The thought here is to fold this one piece of fabric up a couple of times to achieve like multiple pockets and generally add more layers to the fabric to make the whole thing more rugged. After trying a couple configurations, I finally decided on just having the fabric folded in half and then another fold roughly a quarter of the way down so that that extra internal fold will be one pocket and then the, the kind of top area where they come together will be a larger internal pocket. It'll make more sense as I build, I promise. But then of course that whole thing will like fold up to become one single bag that you can wear on your shoulder. We loosely based it off of these real life kind of med kits that open up like, like long wise so you can access everything all at once. Now to figure out all the little pockets and stuff on the inside, I end up just kind of cutting the shapes that I thought they should be out of paper just to see how it all lined up. Happy with that, I marked out the width of the widest pockets first and cut a strip that measurement out of the fabric. I also cut out a three inch wide strip that I turned into these little rounded bottom gussets. I just left them about a quarter of an inch larger than I wanted the actual pocket to be. Using it as my guide, I marked how much fabric was needed to actually wrap all the way around that gusset and still leave me enough material to wrap over the top to form a closure. Before I can sew these together though, I first folded that quarter inch extra at the top so that I can make it have a more finished edge. I did the same thing to the end of the pocket material as well. After a quick run through my sewing machine to lock those rollovers in place, it was time to connect everything together. To do this, I just lined up the corners so that both of the finished edges were facing each other and the unfinished edges were on the outside. Then it was back to the sewing machine to connect the two together. Now this is the first time I've had to do something kind of round like this and I was really worried going into it. But it really wasn't that hard. I just found that as long as I made sure the needle was going through the fabric when I tried repositioning that top layer to follow the rounded bottom, nothing moved on me too much and it was fairly easy to get that shape I was looking for. And this actually turned out really good. When I turned it inside out or right side out, the seam looks pretty clean and I'm honestly stoked at how much easier this was than what I thought it was gonna be. Now to make sure that the edges of the flap that actually closed over looked finished as well, I just cut tiny slits right where those flaps meet the sides. Doing this allows me to fold up those edges so that I can lock them down too. And check out this dope little pocket. I'm stoked with how cool this thing came out and honestly how easy it was to do. Like a lot of these sewing projects are kind of intimidating to me because I don't have a lot of experience in sewing, but the more I kind of dive into these things and just try them, the more I figure out they're not as daunting as I thought they were gonna be. Now to make this thing look even better, I folded in the gussets on the side and the bottom and ironed them into place to really press in those seams. This makes everything look a lot more square. It's impressive how much ironing seams really defines the shape of a thing and makes it look so much more clean. After repeating the whole process seven more times, my full complement of pockets are complete. I love pockets and I'm envisioning in this one specifically like a whole bunch of places for like, I don't know, bandages and herbs and like tinctures or something. Little tiny, little tiny potions you can use to heal people, stuff like that. But to be honest, if I was to make like my own potions for healing, uh, I would probably poison myself. Let, let's be clear, I'd probably poison myself. Luckily, thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare, I can keep from poisoning myself while getting my Snape on. In the class, Make Your Own Herbal Tinctures, Tonics, and Teas, our potion master and herbalist extraordinaire, Charlene Rossiter, goes over the benefits of using natural herbs to, in her own words, elevate your health to a new level. But, but think of it like she said it like Snape, like, elevate your health to a new level. When said in that voice, it kind of sounds like I would be able to extend my natural life far beyond the limits of the mortal land. Thanks to her, I now know how to identify a wide range of different herbs, seeds, and spices, and barks. I know what they do for your health, 
how to use them to make various herbal teas, tonics, and tinctures. Honestly, it makes me feel like a potions master. Now I can like help with an upset stomach, ease respiratory problems, or even put a stopper upon death itself. Okay, that last one's still a work in progress. I think I have it, but I mean, let's be honest, by the time I know it's not working, I won't be around to worry about it, so. If you wanna learn something new and fun too, you're in luck. Cause the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description below will get one month free trial to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. Not only that, but their site is really user friendly, making learning a breeze. Just click on the link in the description below and start your adventures in learning today. Okay, so now that I have all those nifty little pockets, it's time to figure out how to connect the damn things to the bag. The thought here that Maddie and I had was it would be really cool if those pockets were like detachable, right? So you can kind of be a, a force multiplier of healing. You can take off one that has like potions in it and toss it to somebody. You can take off one that has like the spell cards that we use in our LARP that says mending and toss those to spell casters. Basically just have a whole bunch of people now that can help you heal. It's healing smarter, not harder. So the idea I came up with was to install some sort of a strap that the pocket can kind of hook onto and hang there. To make this, I just cut a three inch wide length of fabric and then folded the two edges in towards the center, pressing them down with my iron. I then folded the whole thing over one more time, pressing that as well. Then I was off to the sewing machine to add a couple of lines of stitching through the whole thing. This left me with a really strong canvas strap that was honestly super easy to make and exactly what I needed. Really is nice. I'm very, very happy with this. Using my rows of pockets as measurement devices, I snipped the strap to the correct length. Then I marked the body of the bag where those straps would land in relation to the pockets so that I could pin them into place. The thought here is to cut little strips of leather like so that I could sew onto the back of the pockets and then slide behind these straps to keep the pockets in place, but still let them be removable when needed. So I went ahead and cut those leather strips of various sizes to match each one of the pockets and then dyed them all a dark brown. Once the dye had dried, it was a simple matter to bring them over to my leather sewing machine and lock them into place with a double stitch line for extra strength along the back of the pockets. Not gonna lie, I wasn't positive this would actually work, but once I had it connected to the bag, I had a much better feeling about it. So with that in my back pocket, I went ahead and actually locked in those straps by adding some stitches to the ends. Still, while sliding my pockets into place, I noticed that the straps were kind of loose and everything would just kind of hang a bit more than I wanted it to. So I measured out how wide those little leather strips would be on the little keeper strips, and then went back over the sewing machine and added stitches at my marks. And this really made all the difference in the world, not only keeping those straps from sagging, but also just keeping each one of those pockets a lot more tightly fitted. Okay, so now that I have that whole pocket debacle figured out, that honestly took me longer than you see there. It took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to commit to that. But now that I have that thing figured out, it's time to actually turn this thing into a bag. To do that, I first started by folding the whole thing in half and inside out, pinning all of the edges together. Then I went to the sewing machine and locked in the two side edges. Now once I turn that right side out, I basically have this long sack. And again, it all just looks way better once you press down those edges. While pressing down those edges, I also folded up the edge of the opening so that I can set that into place and make sure it's nice and clean. Eventually, I do want to kind of fold up that, that quarter of the bottom to form another pocket, but there's still a lot of like sewing where I have to get into that space, so I'm leaving it open for now. Now, as Maddie's picture in basically every video game med kit ever shown has, we wanted this thing to have a, a little circle with a little red cross in it to say like, you know, med kit. Which, by the way, if y'all know where that comes from, like why that's the thing, leave it down in the, in the comment section. I'm, I'm curious now. To put that sucker in place, I just busted out some leather and used the rim of my cup here to draw out a circle. I cut and prepped that, as well as this tiny little cross that goes right in the center. That cross, I ended up dyeing a nice, deep oxblood red. For the circle, I used a white EcoFlow paint that's designed for leather. Now, I want this bag to look like it's like battle worn and everything, so I wasn't too careful with my brush strokes, just kind of sloppily putting them on. Almost like it had to be repaired or like freshened up a couple times during its life. Then it was back to my leather sewing machine to lock that circle into place, and then to lock the cross on place on top of that. And can I just say, I freaking love how this came out. I like having the kind of rough stitches over the top and the general colors. It's just, ah, it's gorgeous to me. That's so nice. It was at this time though that I realized that all those little pockets that I made, they, they have no way of keeping shut. Like there's no way, like they can hang onto the, the little strips there, but then they're just gonna be flying open all over the place. 
So I decided to put like a button on them and then use some cordage wrapped around the bottom to actually loop onto that button and hold everything into place. And full disclosure, I only recently learned how to actually put on a button. Like I used to just go through all the little holes in the fabric and then like tie it off and that's it. But I learned that you actually, yeah, you do a few passes through all the little holes, making sure it's nice and strong first, but then you pass the needle behind the button and wrap around the thread underneath six times. This actually ends up leaving you with a little shank behind that button to give you enough space to actually use the damn thing. Then you just pass the needle back through the fabric a couple times to lock your windings in place and tie it off. It's a super simple skill that honestly eluded me for the vast majority of my life. But there you have it, how to do a button. And luckily, thanks to this project, I got to practice this particular skill eight times in a row. I'm now the master of buttons. Love and fear me. To complete this little assembly here, I punched a hole in the bottom of those little leather flaps and then passed some hemp twine folded in half through that hole. I pulled it up through so that I could reach around the bottom and loop over that button. Then I tied a knot in the back so that I couldn't slide out through that hole. This nifty little design actually serves a few purposes. The first, obviously to hold the bag shut, but when combined with the strap that we pass this thing through, it actually makes those pockets so they can't fall out, even when the bag is turned over. I also found that by pulling the excess cordage from the back, it'll tighten up that pocket, making sure the contents stay firmly inside. Cool, so returning back to the drawing that Maddie made here, it had some handles in the top. Uh, originally that was to, to keep it closed. I think I'm gonna go a different way with that, just because the bag is looser since we're not making it out of like a leather or anything. But I still like the ideas of having those handles so I can use it like a little briefcase, but I can also like hang it on things if I need to. And making it was really easy. I just used some of that leftover strap material I made and sewed the ends into place on the bag. First in the mouth of the opening, and then again, right where the bag folds to meet that opening. And this worked out great, not only giving me a place to hold the bag, but also a place to hang the bag. So again, I can put it like on a tree or something while I'm working on a patient, just have it like opened and hanging and grabbing all the things I need. That being said, I did still want like a crossbody strap so I can just kind of wear it and run around while in the field and having my hands open. To make this, I ended up just cutting some leather straps that I folded over to lock in this little D-ring here. Then I added a belt buckle to one side. Doing this allows me to lock the bag shut and gives me a place to attach a strap. I just secured this to the bag by stitching all up the back side to carry most of the weight and adding a couple of stitches to the front just to keep it in place. Also at this time, I decided to lock in that final fold of fabric to make that bottom pocket area permanent. This now gives me this beefy little pocket that I can stick all manner of things in. It feels really solid and there's plenty of space for whatever I need. Then I simply fold it up and buckle those straps to keep the bag shut and have a place to connect shoulder straps to. And come on, you cannot tell me that doesn't look sharp. I really like the way the leather and the canvas look together. And that was another portion that I wasn't sure how to do. It was kind of hard because the, the canvas, it wants to bend in on itself. Like as soon as there's weight on it, it, it gets all wonky. But putting those leather straps that wrap all the way around it and kind of hold its frame a little bit worked perfectly. I'm super happy with it. Okay, so the last thing I need to make is the actual shoulder strap. But we've already made straps in this project. So I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing, just, you know, larger. Cutting a six inch wide strip out of the canvas to start with. Then just as before, folding it over onto itself, first making sure the edges are clean, before ironing it completely in half to give me the finished width of the strap. Then it was a simple matter of just running it through my sewing machine to keep it all in place. And this is the best one I've done yet. My stitch lines feel more or less straight, at least more than usual. And honestly, the whole assembly feels really strong. I'm quite proud of that. It's as simple as the little steps. I'm proud of how that came out. To connect it, I just looped it through those D-rings and then added a square of stitching to make sure it was nice and strong. Look at how cool this damn thing is. God, I love how that looks. It sits nicely on my shoulder. I like where it falls on my hip. The connection point to the strap came out really nice and overall, I'm just really super excited about it. As just a little extra addition to it, I took the strap and I sewed it into like little loops so that I had this place to add bandages to it, just in case you need a bandage in a hurry. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do to this bag is to really give it that vibe like it's been through war, like it's been lived in over the past year. I didn't want it to have that plastic and new look. I wanted to have that vibe like it's seen battle. So I just took some 80 grit sandpaper and kind of went to town on this thing. Paying extra careful attention to all the spots that would get more usage, like the openings at the top or where it folds down at the bottom, the back where it would rub against me as I ran. I made sure to score up the leather a bit as it sticks out the most and would rub against things that I passed. I even roughed up all the pockets on the inside as they would definitely rub up against each other as the years of use took their toll. 
Finally, I went through with a rag that had some leather antiquing dye on it and just kind of lightly applied it roughly everywhere to give it kind of that dingier, more stained look. And check out how amazing this thing is. It has plenty of space to hold all my special herbs and potion bottles so that I can get somebody up and fighting quickly. It also has room for my healing cards so that spellcasters nearby can help our troops get back up. And because of the design, I can just detach the little pocket and throw it at somebody as I'm running by to help somebody else. Finally, because out of LARP, you're still real people running in a real field who can actually get hurt. I decided to add some actual first aid equipment like band-aids and whatnot. This I tightly wrapped up in a piece of linen and shoved into that inside pocket. Then closed up my convenient little med bag, keeping everything safe and secure. I am over the moon with how this thing came out. The functionality honestly came out a lot better than I thought it was going to. The main pocket gives me plenty of easy access to store larger materials. When I need more supplies, the whole thing folds open, giving me easy access to all my little pockets and my main internal pocket where my IRL stuff lives. Then the whole thing conveniently folds right back up and ready to go. It works great, but also just the overall look of this thing, like roughing it up and making it look lived in, really added that extra little mwah. Ah, that's something to it. It's so, so cool. It looks like a movie prop. I love this thing. Okay, so now I kind of want to shift gears really quick. I'm super excited to go ahead and announce our winners for level one of our Level Up Lob competition. If you're unsure what I'm talking about, check out this video here for more details as level two will be starting soon. Now, we're not the ones who picked the winners. The responsibility completely belonged to Berg Snyder. Blessedly, because you guys brought this thing home. Let me tell you what, the costumes and, and the projects you put together, oh man, you're so talented. Anyways, I'm gonna let Berg Snyder here tell us who the winners are. We got the little circle thing. Are we recording? I think we're recording. We're recording. Wow, oh, this, God. Is, this is the end, like the finish line. Of this level. Yeah, of this level, and there's so many to come. Yes. Wow. <laughs> hey everybody, from Berg Schneider here in Frankfurt, Germany, really excited about level one and the completion of Skill Tree's Level Up LARP Challenge. I've been really excited watching how things have gone, been going on the Discord, and I know you've been actively in the channel as well. Yeah, I've joined a few days ago, and I've gone through the submissions, and. I must say I had a blast. Like it's ton of fun. It was amazing. Yeah, it's really enjoyable. So we are excited to announce the first, second, and third, as well as the wild card winner for level up LARP level one for skill tree. So without further ado, I think we should jump into our third place choice. Okay. Do you have the post-it note of I have glory? The post note. This is like the most important part now. Yeah. No, but the for the third place and we must say we're both very amazed about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We have Meg with, as our winner of the third place. Yes. Meg did an amazing job. I love the way, th there's so many things going on with the mm. alteration of the costume in the sense of functionality adjustments, which I really enjoy. Yeah. And I think the, the adjustment of adding pockets to this was really cool. Um, brought a whole new layer to the costume. Absolutely. Yeah. As you said, it brightened it, yeah. which I really enjoyed. And, and what also brightened it, the whole embroidery. Like absolutely. the whole embroidery of the back part, absolutely. the flowers. Amazing. Absolutely. Like, for myself as an ongoing tailor, this embroidery was an astonishing job. Yeah, I think amazing so. Work. It's great yeah. stuff. So congratulations. Third place, Meg. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Second place. Okay, second place. We have Keegan. Keegan. Keegan did an amazing job. Yeah. There's like, so much going first on. Thing, first thing that sprung to me were these um, red points that yes. he has used in lacing up the front. Yes. And the bright brass that mm. he put on there mm -hmm. really made, made it pop. It really adds, so we always talk about like false layering mm. and, and the importance of false layering in building costumes that work as well as look like they have a lot of depth. And the false layering that was added to this was fantastic. The, yeah. the adjustment of adding extra trim elements and the collar, I really enjoyed that. I think he did a great job. Yeah, amazing work. Yeah, and fits in with the character, yeah. just like our third place winner, Meg. So, which brings us to first place. Ooh, yeah, th this was a big one. This like, was really tricky. Fir first thing I said, this must have taken hours. Yeah, like hours I, upon hours. I was yeah. kind of blown away because I would not have done that. Like I've done small amounts of this particular mm. skill, but never have I leveled up that skill. Uh, it's not on my skill tree, let's put it that way. And the one that did it was Yana. Yana, first place Yana absolutely deserves this first place. I, I'm so impressed by the amount of embroidery that was done by hand. 
unbelievable. Yeah, the amount of thinking you have to put into this when designing dwarven embroidery Absolutely. and interweaving embroidery is a whole nother level of imagination yeah. you have to perform. So. And the idea of it being a dwarven prospector. Yeah. I love that as well. And so it's this kind of ranger prospector character. Love the backstory concept as well. Really felt, felt like it, it fit really well. So um, absolutely thought this was for sure the one that we wanted to take first. So congratulations, absolutely Yana, deserved. absolutely deserved. Amazing job. There's one last one though, yeah, which that's... is our wild card. <laughs> that's, I mean, she was the, the one where the wild card fit the best. And absolutely. It's it's like, this is the category where this this was imagined for. Absolutely. So, and for the wild card, we have Rachel. Yeah, Raquel, Rachel, not sure how it's pronounced. Apologize if we get that wrong. I loved this because although there wasn't a massive amount of modification done in regard to like adding a lot of functionality mm -hmm. to it, aside from the fact that she did modify sleeves and the sides. That you can take off now. A lot of small embroidery pieces throughout the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And then there was the story. And for us, Wild Card was a winner for story on this one. This one simple element of the costume hit so hard for us. I mean, the, the idea of being a healer and being rem remembering of yeah. the ones that you couldn't save and the yeah. ones that you put your heart on in the field yeah to write them on your sleeve and always have them with you this was something that really hit close to home yeah to be honest. yeah absolutely and I, and I think that this is for me at least this was the one that like there's parts of it where i was like i want to give it first and yeah. then there's like yeah but there's these other ones and it, it's the perfect wild card yeah because although there's a lot that kind of had the same degree of work it was the story element for this one that really pushed it through for me and it's the story you know, kind of embroidered on the yeah. costume. And so, love that. You carry them around with you wherever you walk. Yeah, love that. <laughs> so, from here at the Berg Schneider team, it's really great that we get to be part of this and get to, to enjoy this creative process with you all and continue on with this costume journey on level two, which we can't wait to see what you guys do with. It's gonna be amazing, we can't wait. This was just the beginning. This was the, the tiny stone yeah. that hopefully set everything in motion yeah. and will be the momentum provided to let this whole thing basically just grow and grow. Yeah, we're and really excited to see it. Growing, we're back to our skill tree. Absolutely. <laughs> Every time you sit down and you work on a costume, leveling up those skills. So from us, to you guys, thank you for being involved and we look forward to seeing what you bring on in level two. Keep crafting. Keep crafting. Thanks so much. Congratulations to all of our round one winners. I'm again over the moon with how you guys just brought it for this competition. Thank you so much. It just, it means everything to us that you're having this much fun and working as a community. And if you didn't win this round, we got more rounds coming up. So definitely keep plucking away. For now though, I must go. The field of battle needs me. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. It's a drunk medic, that's what I am. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a fantastic way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks and becoming one of our Patreon members. Extra special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon members, Josh Bicking and John Schmidt. I can't express enough how much your support means to us. It's the only way we're able to keep doing what we're doing here and afford like all the materials to make our stuff. If you'd like to support what we do here, why don't you consider joining our Patreon? Link in the description below. Or you can click on one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you'd like. I'd pick the one on the right, the one on the left, pretty good too. I made them both, I like them all. Is a drunk medic better than no medic at all? Hmm? Who wants healing? Oh.